big fan of coffee. The nature of an espresso being quite simple, full of flavour, nothing added, strong and powerful, seemed to fit my sensibilities about my artwork. Kind of fitted what I liked about my car, although not particularly powerful. I was going to see a client one time, I sat in the local coffee shop and I was just looking for something to doodle on. I didn't have any paper with me, so the coffee cup I had, I doodled a little Porsche on it and people seemed to like it. What became literally a throwaway thing, I did throw that particular one away, became more and more adventurous. It was kind of like signing off that little moment and then people started contacting me and saying, wow, can I have my car on a cup? There was an immediacy to this kind of work. The more I started making these Porsche pictures and referencing some of this great aesthetic that I'd seen in the Porsche heritage, I thought, well, maybe I could start showing some people, maybe other people like it. I think when you take something that's essentially disposable, something that somebody's used to drink out of, but then you impose on it a picture that somebody can relate to, they go, wow, that's become something else now. And I think the accessibility of it, the fun of it, people get that. I'm Mark Morgan. I'm an illustrator. I make pictures about cars. As a kid, I always drew pictures at school, war scenes, those little tanks and soldiers. I was given a plastic Porsche, it was like a four-year-old or something, and the shape of it just became indelibly imprinted on my brain. My dad then showed me how to draw things in perspective using a box system, because he was quite a good drawer himself. So once I could kind of make a car look like it was in perspective, that was like a big leap for me then in owning an expression of what I liked about cars. So I went to art school. You're not so much taught how to be an illustrator, but you are given the framework to kind of explore the possibilities for you. And then you're kicked out on the street and then you have to suddenly make it up for yourself. Scrabbling around, trying to get work, trying to show people, hey, I'm really good at this. Uh, why don't you pay me to do some stuff for you? And then got an agent in London, start building up a very small career in doing it professionally. Ten years later, we're still doing illustration, and it was quite a niche world of whiteboard, visualising other people's ideas or conversations. I put all the kind of car stuff to one side as I became a professional illustrator. It wasn't until I owned the Porsche that I actually started the interest in the car, interest in the heritage of the brand, from its motorsport, from the way it used to advertise, from the whole look and feel of how Porsche looked in the 50s, 60s and 70s. That then started influencing a whole new range of work that I was starting to make. I realised then that rather than something being this unattainable kind of, is my work good enough? Um, well, just give it a go. So I kind of created a website, put my pictures up on there. Then I started making some posters. I started selling some posters. Magazines got wind of it and they got really interested by the, the, the style of it. Um, it was something a bit different. And it's, it's small, but it's grown from there really. Having done whiteboard illustrations for 10 or 12 years now for corporate clients, in the back of my mind I'm thinking, how does this kind of way of working, this very large, expressive, tends to be black and white, how does that influence my very colourful Porsche motoring work? Being a fan of the Luftgehalt events in America, I thought, well, here's an event that has got an artistic sensibility. It's Porsche and it's an experience. And people like me drawing live because they experience something being created in front of their eyes. And I thought this is a perfect marriage. I got in touch with Patrick Long and suggested, let's create a massive picture live on the day. Perfect subject for that would be Porsche air-cooled timeline history. Let's make it really big and make it a pop-up interactive show. He was really up for that. I could bring some of those techniques of my corporate life into a subject matter that I was really passionate about and make a huge picture that people seem to respond to brilliantly on the day and since. Triple Espresso, I've been really fortunate in that something that I just kept to myself for quite a few years when I started to show people response from them has been massively beneficial to me. It's probably the first time in my professional career 
that I've now got the confidence about how I want to express myself and what I've got to say through my work. My creative language, my voice is valid and people like it. The coffee cups have been really important to the visibility of me and my work. Because they were something very different from a wash of all the other kind of imagery, they became a calling card for people then to see my other things. Damn you cups! <laughs> Just like, you know, something that was so throwaway now demands of me. Because you're always trying to be better than your last cup, having new ideas, new ways of applying pens or colour or whatever to the set of constraints. You know, you're trying to push the boundaries on those constraints all the time. It's those little sets of problems that you give yourself that make the whole thing rewarding in the end. I'm so glad that the coming together of ideas in my head and the car that was a hobby, bringing that in with the art stuff, the coffee all thrown in there mixed up has kind of created this thing that is just me and people are digging that and that's great. My only hope for it is that it's growing, it's an organic thing, but that it will continue to do so. It's people's reaction to the stuff that is the greatest measure of the success. And whether it's a cup or it's something as large as the Lufka Holt War, something didn't exist before and in front of their eyes, it does now. <laughs>